You are now listening to Playbook Radio. Here is your host, Martin and Williams. And welcome to Playbook Radio. My name is Martin Williams. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. We do so on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. All the links to the podcast can be found at GamePlanPlaybook.com. That's GamePlanPlaybook.com. So today what I wanted to talk to you about is how confusion kills execution. So the playbook is a four-part roadmap to achieve any goal that you want to achieve, right? And the four parts are mindset, vision, planning, slash strategy, and execution. And so execution is something that a lot of people struggle with because they typically are, you know, good at planning or they're good at visualizing or they're good at, you know, mindset work and things like that. But when it comes time to actually execute, they freeze up. And one of the reasons why they freeze up is because they don't know what to do, right? They're confused. And so I wanted to address it because I think a lot of times what ends up happening is that people get so many ideas, and I know that I have in the past. And when you have a head full of ideas, you're you're not going to execute any of them because your mind is going in a million different directions. So in in the sports world, sometimes what happens is that coaches, when they're game planning, they're trying to confuse the opponent, right? And this happens a lot in football, where a defensive coordinator is trying to confuse the offensive coordinator on the other side of the field. And so they disguise coverages or they disguise alignments in order to trick the opposing coach into doing what they want them to do or hold the ball to the point where the quarterback gets sacked and nothing happens, right? So if you don't watch football, none of this is making sense. (laughs) And I understand that. But if you do watch football, then you get where I'm coming from. In a real life analogy, oftentimes when I come to a a four-way stop sign and it, it seems like it never fails, it's always at least one car or maybe even more than one car that get there at the exact same time. So you may be trying to figure out, well, what's that other car going to do? Or what are those other cars going to do? And there's confusion because the people in the other cars, they're trying to figure out what you're going to do. And what ends up happening is that either everyone sits there or someone darts out. And that can be a problem because what if another person darts out and then we have an accident? And what I've learned to do over the years is, is that anytime I get to a four-way stop sign and, and someone is right there and they get there at the same time that I do, I let the other person go because it alleviates the confusion. Anytime there's more confusion, there will either be no execution or wrong execution. So think of it as an inverse equation. The more confusion, the less execution. And really more to the point, the more confusion, the less successful execution. There was an old preacher who said that straight talk makes for straight understanding. And I love that quote because what happens a lot of times is that people are often trying to sound smart or look smart instead of delivering clear communication, instead of delivering a clear a clear message. Because people can't act on a confusing message. Any speaker, any preacher, their goal, honestly, should be clarity. Because if if they're not clear, then people won't act on the message. So we understand that confusion can be a problem. If you're in leadership, if you're in sports, if you're, you know, if your coach is asking you to do something and you don't know what he or she is asking you to do, then you're not going to execute at your highest level. If you're at work and your supervisor is asking you to execute something and they're not clear in the, in the planning or in the instruction, excuse me, 
then you're not going to execute at the highest level. So confusion is, is a problem. And so what you want to do is that you want to make clarity a goal, okay? You want to make clarity a goal. And you want to get to a point where it almost becomes habitual. Before you sit down and do anything, you have to clear all the ideas, all the stuff out of your mind, right? There's another quote that says that your, your best thinking is what got you here. So if you're not where you want to be, then don't put so much trust in your mind, right? If you like where you are, then yeah, I would say, you know, continue along in that line of thinking. But if you're not really crazy about where you are, then you have to, you know, you have to shift. You have to shift your, your thinking. You have to shift your thought life because your best thinking is what got you here, right? So look at it this way. Think of it like a plane that's taking off, okay? When a plane takes off, there's, there's a certain process that you have to go through before the plane takes off. And if you don't go through that process, then you're not allowed to take off. It's a federal regulation if you don't follow these checklists. Okay, so if you're in a space where you have to execute, and that's all of us, right? Whether it's executing on the field, on the court, executing at work, at school, at home, whatever the case may be, you want to think about these checklists, right? So the first thing is, is that you want to get clarity before you start. And I alluded to it a couple of ways to do that. And you have to try each one to see which one works for you. But what I do is I make a plan. And depending on the time, I make a, a detailed plan. The bigger the goal, the bigger the execution needed, the more detail goes into the plan. But just like coaches prepare a game plan for their players, you should prepare a game plan for yourself, right? Before you start work, before you start a project, before you start a business, before you start creating a product, before you do anything, there should be a detailed plan, okay? Why plan? Because the plan will create clarity, okay? Planning is the cure for confusion, okay? Because when you start planning, what do you do? You get greater clarity. Okay? There's a definitive path that we're going to go down. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean that we don't deviate from the plan. Of course. You know, there's going to be times when you're going to have to deviate. Any flight plan for any airplane, 90% of the time, that plan is going to change. Now, the, ch the change in the plan is small. Okay, but what you want to do and what you want to understand is that when you make that initial plan, the deviations are going to be minor, should be minor. If you're finding that you're having major deviations from the original plan, then the plan wasn't very good. And then you have to, you know, basically, you know, hone in on making a better plan next time. But for a lot of people, they don't make any plan. And this is why they're confused. This is why they don't know what to do half the time because there's no plan in place, right? So you should have a game plan before you start, whatever it is that you're starting. The second thing is that you want to elevate your thought life. You want to change what you consume. Most people watch way too much social media, me included. I'm over my limit. I shouldn't be watching as much as I'm watching. But, you know, I'm not watching destructive stuff. Like I'm not watching, you know, a bunch of violence, a bunch of fighting and things like that. But if you're watching those types of things, if you're watching low energy content, what's happening is that it it's, it's like a feeding ground for confusion. Okay. And you're, it's creating a level of cloudiness in your mind. And I've seen it in my own life, and I've seen it with other people, when they consume a bunch of garbage, they're not clearly thinking. They're not thinking in a clear way, okay? So you want to elevate your thought life. If it's not helping you have a better life, if it's not 
elevating you, if it's not edifying you in any way, then you shouldn't be consuming it. Uh, I, I did a podcast years ago called You Are What You Eat, okay? And it's not, we, we know that that's true when it comes to food, but it's also true when it comes to what you consume, what you watch, what you listen to, right? Are you listening to a bunch of garbage? Are you listening to a bunch of things that are low energy? Because if you're consuming low energy things, then you're going to be low energy. And just like a plane, a plane needs fuel to go higher, right? A, a plane needs fuel to go higher and, and farther, right? I just flew from Europe to Miami, okay? And that, that plane, it needed to be a big plane and it needed to have a lot of fuel in order to make it to Miami. If it had enough fuel to make it to Norway, then we would have ended up in Norway, right? But I had to go from Poland to Miami, and the, the amount of fuel re required was more than what it would have taken to go to Norway or go to Paris, right? You can't be low energy and go far, is my point. You have to consume things that are high energy because of where you want to go. You want to go higher and farther than you've gone before. So you have to elevate your thought life, and that's done through higher energy consumption, okay? Now, once you get to that place of a higher plane, then you want to act from that place. You want to execute from the highest level. You want to execute from a, a place of service, a place of selflessness, okay? A lot of people, because they have temporal needs and there's nothing wrong with having temporal needs or temporary needs, they act from a low place, right? And I get it because I used to do the same thing. You know, if I'm putting out content, if I'm putting out ads, you know, I'm trying to make money, right? And, and yeah, I mean, in, in business, you want to make money, but you want to act from a higher place. You want to act from a place of service, okay? Because that is, spiritual law says that you know, the greatest among you is a servant. If you want to be the greatest, whatever it is, you want to be the greatest player, the greatest players are the, often the greatest teammates because it's not just about them. They, they want to be, excuse me, they want to bring everybody in, everybody up with them, right? You've never really heard of the greatest players being awful teammates. They may not be the nicest people, but they're great teammates because they understand that they can't win it alone. So they act from a place of service, right? The greatest spouses are not the most attractive or the most financially successful. They're usually the ones who have the highest level of service, okay? The greatest among you is a service. You can't get away from it. So Wherever you're executing, again, if you're executing on the field, how may I serve? How can I help my team get better? How can I help my teammates get better? How can I help us elevate as a team? It's not just about my stats or, or my numbers. How can I do whatever it takes for the team to win? You know, if you're at work, acting from a place of service. It's not just about your paycheck. How can I make the company better? How can I make my department better? Right? They may not be paying you what you're worth. I get it. They may not be giving you the title that you deserve. I get it. But I promise you, if you lock in on that and you execute from that place, your results will be better. And then they have a decision to make. Are we going to let a really good employee go to our competitor and get paid more, or are we going to pay them what they're worth, right? You put the ball back into your employer's court because you're acting from a place of service. If you're a business owner, are you acting from a place of service or are you acting from a place of selfishness, right? If I'm acting from a place of service, everything is about making my customers better, better people, better players, better employees, better business owners, better, you know, husbands and wives and, you know, better people in the community, just better people, right? If, if that's my goal, I don't have to worry about the results. The results will take care of themselves. 
but I've got to act from a higher plane. And sometimes we got to keep reminding ourselves that because everyone around us might be selfish, but you got to act from a higher plane. The, the more you, you hone in on service and execute from that place, then your results are going to be better. And not only that, the level of clarity you have will be so high. I mean, you, there will be no confusion about what you're here to do. Okay. And then finally, simplify or die. Okay. If you're, you know, if you're, if you got like a hundred things on your to-do list and I get it right, especially certain jobs, you got a ton of things on your to-do list. If you're focusing on all those hundred things, you're not going to do anything. Okay. You got to have one thing that you're honing in on and to the exclusion of everything else. And when you're at work, it's even tougher because people are emailing you, IMing you. I have a coworker who calls me and, and doesn't even ask if I'm available when he calls. He just calls, which is extremely rude. And I'm probably going to have to check him at some point. But, you know, all these different distractions. But you got to simplify. You got to simplify. And this is the case whether you're playing you know, you're playing a sport, you know, you're, you're on the field, you're on the court. Like, what's the one thing that you got to focus on, right? What's your one job here? You know, if you're an offensive lineman, your job is to, you know, knock the defender away from the ball carrier, right? Or keep him away from the ball carrier, however you have to do it, and not get a penalty. If you're a quarterback, your job is to get the ball to your playmaker or make a play yourself, right? Make the play. Whether you make the play by drawing, make the play by running, okay? If you're a basketball player, your job is to make the shot or get the rebound. But it's honing in on one thing. If you're at work, what's the one thing I got to do today? What's the one thing I got to do right now that's going to, you know, essentially elevate the project, elevate me or help elevate my team. I got to focus on the one thing. You got to simplify. Part of the overwhelm is that we're trying to do too many things at once. And I get society is moving us in that direction, but you got to push back. You got to resist. And you got to resist the the urge to multitask. Okay. And and sometimes people, you know, they they feel like they have a right to interrupt whatever you're doing and you have to push back and you have to tell them, Hey, I'm doing something. I will get back to you in five minutes. I am not available at this moment. Okay. That is the, you know, if you want to execute at a high level, you got to simplify. You got to keep it simple. The simpler the action, the more likely you will execute. Okay. If you're a business owner, you got 50 million ideas. Again, another thing I totally understand, creative people create a lot of ideas. Totally get it. What's the one thing? Forget the other 999 things. What's the one thing that you have the urge to do right now, okay? And push that out and execute on that, excuse me. And what will happen over time is the more you simplify, the more you'll get done. And the more you get done, the better your results will be. So confusion kills execution, but you now you've got some tools that you can use to execute better, more consistently, and at a higher level. So think about those things. Holler at me in the comment section. Tell me what you think about it. My name is Martin Williams. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to Playbook Radio. If this episode helped you, please share it with family and friends. For more about playbook strategies, please go to gameplanplaybook.com.